impunity. An international friendship that has its roots in a friendship between Simon Bolivar, Venezuela's liberator, and George Washington is confirmed here as President Kennedy welcomes President Betancourt to the United States. The Visitors' Caribbean Republic is the sixth largest country in South America, and its nearly eight million citizens are highly regarded for their reasonableness, tolerance, and love of freedom. Venezuela's oil-rich Maracaibo Lake spouts millions of barrels of oil daily, making Venezuela second only to the United States among the oil-producing countries of the world. And oil is not the Federal Republic's only buried treasure. As recently as 1947, in Venezuela's remote Guiana Highlands, the now famous Iron Mountain Cerro Bolivar was discovered. Once South America's greatest cattle raising country, Venezuela's highland plains still boast great herds that contribute to the world's beef supply. But Venezuela too has been plagued by communist-inspired political unrest. This is a typical scene created by red agitators in many Latin American countries in their attempts to gain power. Violence and death that have thwarted the establishing of democratic rule and which allowed such dictators as General Perez Jimenez to take over the government. The soldier presented a benign picture as he instituted great public works, but chicanery took over. And though the buildings shaped up in majestic array, the slums they were intended to abolish prevailed. Only those favored by the dictatorship could afford the new dwellings. The average Venezuelan was hardly any better off than he was under the terrible regime that ended with a death in 1936 of Juan Vicente Gomez. The army supported Perez Jimenez, and with its strength at his disposal, he ruled Venezuela with an iron hand. Elections were mockeries, and freedom of the press abolished. But despite his secret police and the exile of democratic leaders, an opposition political party was formed that finally overthrew the paunchy tyrant. In 1958, Patriotic bands of Venezuela's present Democratic Action Party staged an uprising that with popular support achieved a victory for the forces of democracy. In 1959, Romulo Betancourt was democratically elected president of Venezuela and, in President Kennedy's words, led a four-year peaceful political and economic revolution which made Venezuela a shining example for its sister republics in Latin America. But his success in doing good for his people made Betancourt communism's number one enemy. He has had to overcome several assassination attempts and narrowly escaped with his life from this auto that was bombed by minions of a West Indies dictator. However, in 1961, Betancourt's popularity was such that he could, as host to President Kennedy in Caracas, walk free and unguarded among his people. JFK and Jackie became Venezuela's idols now President Kennedy can point to Venezuela as the best argument for the Pan-American Alliance for Progress program.